during that time, <clears throat> I got a call uh, at the house, um, and this guy said, is this Herb? And I said, yeah. Well, my name's Earl Scruggs, and uh, I said, come on, who is this? <laughs> Some of the guys from Berkeley, you know, doing a number on me. And he said, well, I am Earl Scruggs, and um, I'd, like to, I'd like to have a, a meeting with you if you don't mind. I said, well, really? Okay. Uh, well, I'd like you to come over to the house and, uh, you know, we can sit and talk a while. He said, don't forget your banjo. <laughs> oh, boy. I said, okay. So I brought my banjo over. And, and for some reason, he was living in Madison, and so was I. Uh, we were within two miles of each other. I had no idea where he lived. So I drove over to the house on Donna Drive, and I sat in front of the house for about a half an hour. <laughs> okay, I'm 22 years old, you know, and <clears throat> little or no experience, but uh, I said, okay, this is it. So I went up and knocked on the door, and Louise's secretary, Louise was Earl's wife, uh, Louise's secretary opened the door, and I said, is your dad home? <laughs> and she looked at me and she said, you're not from around here, are you? <laughs> I said, no, ma'am, I'm not. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, is, is he available? And she said, yes, he's in the other room. Come on in. So I walked in. First thing I noticed was around the living room were these wonderful Thomas Allen paintings of the album covers that he did for them. These were the originals. And I thought, oh boy, I'm close to heaven here, you know. <laughs> so he came out and he was so sweet to me. I mean, he was just a gentleman. He just, he couldn't have gotten more enthusiastic about me being there than, you know, Chet Atkins or somebody. And so we sat and talked for a while and he said, <clears throat> well, I kindly got you over here under false pretenses. I said, well, what do you mean? He said, well, I had this car wreck in 55, and there's some bone chips in my hip they got to get rid of because the pain is killing me. And he said, um, would you be up to, you know, subbing for me? <laughs> How? What, you know? <laughs> well, you know, I'll take you down and, it would, you know, we, we've played some tunes here together and, you know, I like your picking and, you know, I'd like to introduce you to the boys. I said, the Foggy Mountain Boys? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Friday night, why don't you come over and we'll go down to my car and I'll introduce you. And so, but sure enough, I was right there <laughs> at the appropriate time at Earl's house. And he drove me down there and uh, came in the back way of the Ryman up the stairs. And I walked in there, and I don't know if you've ever seen this book, Rock Dreams. It's an amazing book. Uh, anyway, it's just, here's, uh, let's see, who was there? I walked up the stairs. Here's the guard, the omnipresent guard. You know, who are you? What are you doing? You know, uh, oh, hello, Mr. Scruggs. Yeah, come on in. So we went in there, and... Flat and the rest of the guys were outside the dressing rooms playing, just warming up. And on the far, the closest uh, dressing room to the stage, Monroe was in there with his guys. And it was just like a dream. It was unbelievable. And I just stood there and Earl says, uh, Lester, this is Herb Peterson and he, uh, he's gonna sub for me. <clears throat> Lester said, is that right? <laughs> yeah <clears throat> so <laughs> yeah boy uh, well I'm going to try sir you know and he said well you know the Martha White theme do you and I said yeah you know so we did that and he looked at me and went okay um, let's do uh, Cabin on a Hill do you know the guitar part you know that Earl plays yes sir I do and so I got the D18 that Earl played, and I got to play it on that, yeah, and uh, it was great. And he didn't want me to sing. He had enough singers on stage, so I was just the banjo sub and, you know, 
that was it. 